Hi, this is Professor Jacob. And so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take a look around the internet um, at a couple of examples of queries that we may run. And we just didn't know that they were queries. Also, we're going to take a look inside the access, um, inside an access database. And we're going to take a look at or try to make sense of what a table is, what a query is, what a form is, how it operates. Um, and so hopefully you'll find something useful that you can latch on to um, in this video to sort of have everything make sense. Now in the resources group on SIMNET, you will find Professor Jacob's notes, okay? This one is Access Chapter 1, all right? And so um, this document actually kind of gives you um, a heads up as to what is all this stuff that I'm reading? Why is it important for me to know what a database is or what a table is, what a query is, what a form is? Why is it important? And the reason is every single business, whether you're a car repair shop or a hospital or just a general business, a um, gas station or a store of some sort, um, all of them basically use data, okay? And more importantly, they use databases. Databases really help us to streamline our operations in a business or in a college, and it helps us to become more efficient, all right? And so um, my notes, if you look down at the very bottom of this page, page one, you'll see additional notes from Professor Jacob. And this is just me talking to you one-on-one, -on -one, just on the paper, to try to help this information make sense to make it a little bit more palatable for you, all right? So be sure to read the notes because it's gonna help you a great deal, all right? Okay, so here we go. Um, right now we're on the Jefferson website. This is the Jefferson homepage. And so um, it's very easy for us to, of course, see that there are links everywhere. Uh, we know that there's a link because our mouse pointer turns in from an arrow into a hand. Okay, that's one way. Um, and because, you know, it looks fairly streamlined, but pretty much everything that you click on from student self-service to search, okay, to even this JCTC tweets um, app here are, it's, it's really a Twitter app, okay? Um, where you can bring the code from, from Twitter into your uh, website and it will give you an up to the minute or real time tweet um, listing. All right. So, um, pretty much everything that you see is coming from some sort of database. Okay. And you probably are like, oh, wow, well, I didn't know that. Well, let's go over to Google. Okay. So if we're on the Google website, we just see an open box here and there's nothing there, nothing that tells us what to do, but somehow we know that if we enter a keyword or some numbers or some symbols with words that we're going to get a result back. 
the Google website is basically a query. Okay, there's a database or several thousands of databases behind Google, this particular form. And when you enter keywords or phrases or whatever, that, you know, the results are going to be pulled up when you hit the enter key. That's a query. All right. Um, what about when you use your mobile device? When you use your mobile device and you're talking into it, of course, I have a Samsung. Um, but when you talk into it and you say, for you iPhone users, Siri, give me Christie's on Dixie Highway in Louisville, Kentucky. That's a query. <laughs> so you've already been using a query, but you just didn't know that it was a query. All right. When you uh, go looking for classes, remember March 1st, all summer classes and fall 2017 classes become available. So when you go out there to sort of put a schedule together for you to take summer classes or fall classes, uh, maybe you're searching for classes on a particular day or day rotation during the week, such as Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday. Okay. Um, maybe you're searching for a particular campus. All of that is a query and you have a nice little form that says, what class are you searching for? What days do you need? What location, what campus location do you need? All of that is a query. So you've been using this stuff already. Okay. So what we're doing for this class is we're making it to where you are the designer of your own database. All right. So that's why you're going to be using the access database management program. All right. It's important to note that access is not a database itself. It is an application that helps you to manage, create and manage databases. All right. So it's kind of the platform or the foundation. All right. So just know that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up access. All right. So let me get back to, let me close this. I'm going to get back to my access objects list. Okay. Or this is my shutter bar, open a close button which opens up my all access objects pane, basically. Okay. All access objects basically displays all objects that are possible in a particular database that's been created with access. All right. So objects include tables, queries, forms, reports, and also macros. Of course, I don't have any macros in this. This is a simple database. All right. So I can see immediately under the category of tables that I have student details. Under the category of queries, I have one query, 2-4-1981, student query. Forms, student details form, and a report, student details report. All right, you will notice that I have at the end of each query form report some type of um, abbreviation or acronym to represent a query form or report. And that is common with folks that use access. Okay, but it's not uh, mandatory that you do that. You could actually spell out query form or report. All right, so I'm going to go into the most foundational piece of a database, and that is the table. All right, now, of course, in most, in most databases, you have more than one table. This is just a simple example. All right, now let me silence my phone before it interrupts us. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into the design view of this table. So how do I do that? Well, I could make the table available, which will then bring up my views button and make it active. Okay, I could do that. Okay, or from the off, before I even open uh, the table, I could right click on it and select design view. So either way is going to get you there. Let me show you the design view on the views menu as well. You have two views, data sheet view, which is this view. It kind of looks like Excel. And then you have design view. So let's go in and go into the design view. All right, so we see that we have, you know, not a lot of fields, okay? Not a lot of containers for data. We have an ID field, which is an auto number field. That means the user will not have to enter anything into this field. It will be automatically generated as each new record is created. So it'll start at one and then as a new record is created, it'll go incrementally up by one. So the next new record would be two. Then the next after that would be three. All right. So we have first name, last name, middle initial, street address, city, state, zip, or postal code. Then we have DOB for date of birth, student ID, and national ID, or your social security number. All right, we have in this column here, data type. Your data type basically tells the user what type of data is acceptable in this field, all right? So it's possible that you could, if you're collecting numbers only, that you could, you know, um, let's say for national ID, if you only wanted nine numbers, you could select a number from the list and they could only enter numbers. If they try to enter text, then what will happen is, or letters, what would happen is it would say, this is not acceptable, okay? Now, short text and long text are basically any combination of alphanumeric you know, uh, characters such as letters, numbers, dashes, hyphens, symbols, you know, whatever. And then the rest of these basically have something specific in them. Okay. Um, so then we're going to move to the description field here or the description column. And if you see, it says optional. And what this means is, of course, you don't have to put it uh, anything into the description field, but with a table, from a table, you want to create forms for the user to sort of interact with. You don't want to necessarily allow um, users of your database to mess around with your table or your records, okay? Yes, they can view your records, but they can't delete them. Um, and that's, that's pretty common. So say for example, with Jefferson, when you log into your student self-service, um, yes, you can look at everything that is there that is about you. Some things you can modify, like your address or your phone number, okay? Um, but there are certain things that you don't have access to change. And that could be what your legal first name is or your legal last name is. Um, you can't change your email address because that's something that's automatically generated by the system. Um, so, and you can tell obvious, you know, there are obvious reasons why you would want to limit the amount of interaction someone has with your data, okay? Or data that you're keeping, such as, if we gave students the ability to get rid of grades that they earned in certain classes, then we wouldn't have, you know, good data, okay? 
or good information to provide, you know, employers or other schools that you may end up transferring to. So our data wouldn't be useful for anything because we give you the ability to say, oh, well, do you want to count this? So you can see that's not, not necessarily something that we would want to do, right? So same concept here. Um, so here in the description area, you basically tell the user what to enter into this field. So say for instance, if someone doesn't know, they just see first name. Maybe they don't know to enter their first name into the field, okay? Um, what about postal code? Not everyone knows what a postal code is, okay? So sometimes you have to spell it out, postal code or zip code, okay? Maybe someone doesn't know an acronym such as date of birth or DOB. So maybe you wanna put that information into the description field, okay? Um, national ID. Not everyone knows that national ID um, is equal to social security number. So you can spell that out for them, okay? So now that you kind of get what, how you understand the design view of a table, we're gonna jump out of here. We didn't change anything, but remember what we put into the description area and it said it was optional, right? But once we create a form, and take a real close look at this, okay? We didn't have anything in the ID field, right? But let's click in the first name field. And you see there's already a record here. If I click on first name, then look down here at the status bar. It says enter student's first name. That is what was in our description area for the first name field. So it's kind of telling the user, okay, this is what you input for this field. Okay. Same thing with street address. Okay. So it's telling, enter the student's physical street address or mailing address. Okay. Same thing with postal code. Remember we had enter postal code or zip code. So when we click on here, the status bar should read interpostal code or zip code. Understand now? All right. So that's when you create forms and your forms basically, without a table, you couldn't have a query or you couldn't create a query. Um, you couldn't create a form. You couldn't create a report because all of your data resides in that table. Okay, so table is the most foundational piece of your database.